The year was 1947. Princeton basketball began playing in a brand new Dillon gymnasium. Gas cost 15 cents a gallon. Harry Truman was president, and a 20-year-old named George Bakenfuso started working at Princeton. Seven decades later, the man affectionately known as Georgie Buck is still going strong. And it's safe to say nobody has been around the athletic department longer. Every day he's here. Every day he's doing what he's supposed to do and never complains. The whole thing about his life is he never missed to be here. You know, if you have, when you have a conversation with George, you know, he's a little raspy voice. Funny in his own way, leader by example and uh, absolutely committed to his craft. He cares so much about Princeton, and he wears it on his sleeve all the time. Well, my name is George Bakken-Fuso, and I've been here now, and, and March will be 70 years. While George officially retired from his position as supervisor of grounds and buildings in 1989, he never actually stopped coming to work. Retired is one of those words that I don't think fits George's vocabulary. Well, right now, I just take care of the floor, gym floor. He does so many things that people just never see. Um, and he, you know, he, do, he doesn't want the attention. He takes pride in this floor, believe me. He's down there with a scraper there and doing this thing. It's really something, isn't it? How valuable he is. He knows everything. Every clock that stops, he knows how to fix it. You know, it's, it's incredible. At age 90, George is still the meticulous caretaker of the basketball court at Jadwin Gymnasium. And while his position now is technically part-time, that doesn't stop him from getting into Jadwin most days before the sun rises, even if tip-off isn't until 7 o'clock that night. I come in here often and he's replacing the nets or he's, you know, he's sweeping the floors and, you know, our chairs are always lined up perfectly. I would come into the office, I was always somebody that was early into the office, but I could never beat George one, and number two, my office overlooks the court. And so I would always look down at seven in the morning or something like that, and there's George buffing the floor, cleaning the floor. Born and raised in Princeton, George has lived his entire life here, save for three and a half years spent in the Army during World War II. He still drives, and he and his wife Phyllis have lived at the same house on Linden Lane in Princeton for over six decades. Every closet, every room, every, every, every table is full of tigers. Pillars are tigers. And I have a coffee table that has maybe 40 tigers on it. George has seen players like Sidney Johnson, Chris Mooney, John Thompson III, and Mitch Henderson, just to name a few, grow from 18-year-old freshmen to Division I head coaches. If they have a statue or retired number at Princeton, Georgie Buck watched them play. He remembers a freshman named Bill Bradley in the 1960s. I remember as a freshman, you used to fill, you used to fill Bill and Jim up. And uh, he, went, he was a pretty nice guy. And over the years, he developed a strong relationship with legendary Princeton basketball coach Pete Carrill. Oh, I mean, I've done everything with Pete Carrill. I can remember now, I used to be working, we used to shoot one on one for boxes of cigar. And I used to travel with him a lot. They used to go out and speak, and uh, I used to go with him. When we'd go on trips, you know, we, we, we beat St. Bonaventure in the tournament, and Bob Duquet was my assistant. And so, uh, we were having a little party after the game and, and somebody got on the piano and uh, Bobby started playing the piano with it and, and everybody started saying Buck and he was so Buck and he was so Buck and he was, you know, he's, he, he was well liked by, by everybody on my team. You could say Princeton is the Bach and Fuso family business. George's father was part of the construction crew that built the old Palmer Stadium, which opened in 1914. Two of his brothers and one of his sons have also worked at Princeton. Even his wife of 62 years, Phyllis, worked in the athletic department, monitoring the front desk at Jadwin and collecting tickets. She used to work for me when I was the fourth supervisor. She used to be the lost and found department working there. Then she used to collect money for Baker Rink. You know, so she's been here about 50 years working. You can't talk about George without Phyllis. Come on. They are a hoot when they are together. And I personally feel that if I had been a TV producer 
I would have created a situation comedy called the Buck and Fusos in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. He used to have pipes all over for irrigation, you know, and we would go down there at night and um, take a ride down. And uh, so he said one pipe was up or something like, you know, and he said, sit on it till I fix it. He turned the water on me. The whole irrigating system, well, the kids thought that was wonderful. They thought that was great. <laughs> and maybe the reason George cares so much about Jadwin Gymnasium is because he remembers watching it being built in the late 1960s. When they built the building, it was Ken Fairman, who was the athletic director. And every night, we used to walk through the building while they were building it just to see everything was going on. He could explain to me what everything was. We watched this go up. I mean, every day we climbed, had the kids climbing, and you know, uh, the boys had to climb up too. And, <laughs> and when he's not watching over Jadwin? I like to go to Lang City, and my wife likes to go there too, so that's where we go. I've been there every couple of weeks. There's a, uh, there's a great video that I've shown my guys Loyola comes to Princeton to play at Princeton, Loyola Marymount, 1991 season, and the gym's packed. And the team's coming on the floor, and there's this shot of a very good-looking George kind of walking off, and I sort of slowed it down, and I'm like, there's the hardest working guy in the gym right there, you know? My wife wants me to retire now. I keep telling her I'm going to retire next year, next year. Because next year it never comes. I tell the coach of that and everything. They say, I've heard that before. I keep saying, I think I'm going to find you down here on Pete Carell's uh, name there. <laughs> he keeps saying he's going to leave, he's going to leave after basketball, but it was supposed to be after, uh, you know, around this time of the year, and now it's after basketball, so, you know. That's George, always reaching for the stars, okay? And of course, about four or five years ago, that got him in trouble when he broke his neck trying to go from the bleachers up to the permanent seats in the upper balcony. I said, what? You were trying to do what? I saw him in the hospital about a month ago, maybe more than that, and his wife insisted that he wasn't going back to work. And I said, oh, I didn't say anything. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. And he was back the next day out of the hospital. He was here doing the floor. Yeah, I, I love to work. <laughs> And I, I'm, I love sports. I never get tired of walking into the gym, and I can't imagine what it's going to be like when, when uh, George decides to stop making this place look like a million bucks. I just think he has to keep going. And uh, this was started him keep going, and he just, you know, I mean, you know, he's pretty old and he still goes. I mean, he, you know, and he won't give it up. Of course, he likes, likes money. <laughs>